On est, on est ici, on est quatre femmes super bien, on vous attend. <laughs> We have a powerhouse panel, and um, it is my great pleasure uh, to welcome you to our first fireside chat. Uh, je m'appelle Perry Johnson, je suis I'm Perry Johnson, I'm the new CEO of the College and Institutes Canada. If I haven't met you, um, yesterday evening, I'd be glad uh, to chat with you today. Setting in terms of our fireside chat, I know that some of you over at that end may have a little harder time seeing us. Um, so if you want to move move closer, we'll try to uh, uh, we'll try to. I'm going to try to stand up a little bit so I'm not right behind the uh, the podium. Uh, so let's get started. Um, so this is our fireside chat about where to from here. And first, I just want to provide a few little opening remarks um, as I have been sort of taking in um, the, the symposium over, over the morning. Um, it's been blowing me away, first of all, how much uh, I'm learning, how much you are doing in terms of having impact uh, through your partnerships on the ground with, uh, with your communities, with industry and community partners. And, you know, it's really really important, to, I think, to underscore and to claim our space as major motors for uh, for meeting Canada's biggest challenges through college-led applied research and innovation. And, you know, we're looking at things like uh, advanced manufacturing and how to respond to the pandemic. Uh, I was just listening to the Tsunami Network and what they have been doing, um, how we are addressing food security in northern communities, how we're addressing climate change. And if we really, I think, so we really have to create a narrative of impact. It's almost a call to action. We have to work together as a community to and better share the impact that we have. We have to really reimagine what we are doing here in terms of research in Canada. We are, we are not secondary partners, second to universities. We have really important work to do, and we have to start today, and we have to reimagine how we speak about our sector and the impact that we have. And you can count on CI CAN to work with you and work with the granting councils to reimagine the national conversation and with regard to the strategy related to funding learned as I've, I've started, particularly as it relates to applied research and, and the impacts that we're having. Our, our team has done, and I know many of you contributed, to a survey um, over the last year regarding um, applied research. And our numbers show 30% growth in research intensity over the previous survey. And that's amazing. And it's, it speaks to growing impact, relevance, reach, and really translating into benefits uh, for Canadians uh, and some of Canada's major challenges. And they're really, I think, this kind of work is going to help inform what I was just talking about, which is a renewed policy program design conversation uh, with our our funding partners, not only at the granting councils, but at the National Research Council, at science-based federal departments, and more broadly in terms of the, the investors in, in Canadian research and innovation. So this fireside chat is actually a real honor for me. Uh, C'est vraiment un honneur pour moi. It's a real honor for me to uh, be with these national leaders in the college sector going to have a chance to pose some questions um, and then we'll open it up to the floor for, for some conversation. Um, and our, our panel is going to be providing a retrospective and forward-looking view on where the system has been in terms of college-led research and where it's going. So I'm going to start with, um, well I'm going to, I'm supposed to start with Natalie but she's in the middle so I'm going to start with Nancy. So Juste à ma, euh, ma, mon droit ici, c'est Nancy Desiel qui travaille activement avec les CCTT depuis 30 ans. She works closely with the CCTTs and she has been for the last 30 years. She is, uh, she works at the National Center in Environmental Technology and Electrochemistry. 
She works uh, in economic diversification and she is very active in many different organizations. She's a, a municipal advisor in Shawinigan. She wants to develop her community, make small businesses more competitive. All this based on knowledge and innovation. Welcome. Thank you. And in the middle, we have Nathalie Meto. Did I pronounce it correctly? Yes. So since uh, 2023, she's leading be between 2015 and 2023. She has led the Office of Applied Research, and she continues to develop uh, strategic initiatives at the intersection of teaching and applied research. Welcome, Natalie. And last, lives in Saskatchewan too, where I'm from. So Susan Bloom is the Associate Vice President Applied Research and Continuing Education at SAS Polytechnic. She spent over 24 years working in a research administration, including roles such as Director of Research Services and Ethics at the University of Saskatchewan and as Director of Finance and Administration at the Saskatchewan Health Research Foundation. Prior to those roles, Nat Susan has had a strong research background in ecotoxology and was a polar bear biologist for the government of Nunavut. Very cool, very cool. So let's get started. So please join me first in welcoming our three wonderful panelists. Okay, so j'aimerais commencer par pour... So I would like yeah. to start by asking the first question to Nancy and Natalie. So when you think back about the beginning of your career in applied research, what were the first challenges in terms of growth that you faced? Nancy, is this working? Well, I would say that the first challenge that I was faced with was that research in CEGEP was at the, its very beginning. My CEGEP is very large in terms of impact, but it's very tiny in space. So it was very difficult very difficult to get support, to get resources, to get the infrastructure to, we needed. And it was um, hard to take risks. And there were many requests from businesses, but there were very few programs to financially support the businesses that wanted to work with us. So, of course, with NSERC and the pilot project at the beginning of the, of the 2010 years, well, the program helped us support businesses and to develop expertise. And with sectoral expertise centers, this was very helpful. And another challenge was to find a way to follow up on operations and to follow indicators with a very small team and few resources. We have very few researchers. We didn't have many managers, career managers. So we had to find a way to do the follow up. And we got uh, uh, funding from NSERC and we were able to improve our operations and we created managers E plus and this allowed us to follow up on our projects in real time with regard to financial resources, human resources, the use of space, accountability. So all of this was centralized. As you know, accountability changes according to the programs and the level of government that's involved. And the fourth challenge that I was faced with, I hesitated to bring it up because we do not experience it in research per se, but we experience it elsewhere. It's to establish our credibility as a woman in the man's world. So when I got on board, I was the fifth woman in Réseau Transtech. It became Synchronex afterwards. So it was not easy from my 
it was easy with my CCTT colleagues because they're very qualified and very open-minded. But whenever I would go and visit plants and go to the regions, I was cute, but not necessarily uh, credible or recognized for my expertise. So I had to work on my image and to really showcase our successes to build up on that cred on my credibility. And today it's going well. Thank you, and I'm pleased to hear that things have improved in the last few years because we have to be sure that research is a welcoming space for everyone. Excellence come from, comes from diversity. And if I may add, today, Within the CCTT network, I believe that we are about 50-50, so it has improved a lot. This is great news. We can see the progress. And Natalie, what has been your experience? Thank you, Nancy. You mentioned 2008, and this is interesting because this is when I got involved in research. I was in Calgary in this convention, attending this convention in 2008, and I'm curious to to know who was there then. I think, uh, Lynn, maybe you were there too? I believe that at the time, we were in a college in Ontario. Applied research was quite new in Quebec. It had begun a long time ago. At the time, I was a, a professor. I have an academic background in science, and we had to do everything. And we worked hard for 15 years. So we had to do the scale up. And we had a long list of things we needed to do. And I'll give you that list. But think about everything that I will mention. This is not something you can learn in five minutes. And there's no particular order. There's no priority. But there were many things to do. First, writing requests for, for funding. It was quite difficult to come up with the right request for funding. If that request is not well worded, you won't get that funding. And then if you want funding, you have to work on ethical research. It's not easy. We all have policies on this, but who really understands them and who is responsible for raising awareness on these topics? Then uh, developing relationship with the business world, the private market. When you come from an academic background, you don't have a, rela a relationship with the private market. They have their own reality. So we have to establish a rapport with them. And then you have to develop research programs that can respond to the community's need. So you have to look at project management reading economic development reports to see what are the trends and priorities. You have to train the people. Nobody in colleges were doing research. So when we would tell human resources we need people, we need researchers, then we had to write uh, work descriptions. At the time, I had to create them all. I wrote about 10 of them. And I see people nodding because you've experienced this as well. So we have to develop research infrastructure. When you start, you have just a part of a counter in, in a classroom. You don't really have space. So you really have to get set up, write funding requests, get funding from the FC. And you need to use the equipment that's uh, provided in the classroom, but sometimes that equipment is not available. And then you have to get students involved in projects. You have to train them. You have to develop uh, project management uh, guidelines. There's also some accountability. And you have to look at perf performance indicators. You have to come up with tables. Then you have to manage growth. You want to grow. There are funding opportunities that come up regularly. You have to be ready for them. So as you can see, it was quite a challenge 
in terms of growth. Many of you have experienced the same. So that's um, that's a, a process that's been unfolding over 15 years. So we can tell that you started from scratch. In that because I think what we are seeing is that evolution of, of capacity and having built the infrastructure and having built all of the systems and the policies and the culture. Um, and so Susan, the question I wanted to pose to you is because you're, you're coming into the space in this more recently and what we wanted to talk to you about was what made you want to jump into college applied research? Um, you know, what differences have you noticed between having come to SAS Poly from your previous university-based research administration experience but also how you're experiencing it now and what you're seeing as the as the real opportunities okay okay lots of questions <laughs> um, so I was at the university sector for um, 16 years so working within the u15 sector and then Saskatchewan Polytechnic uh, was looking for a leadership role on uh, applied research uh, I like challenges and so um, and building teams and making things happen so I went over and um, the first things that I noticed right away was the almost negligible funding opportunities um, that was available at that time. So this was about eight years ago. So things were um, really restrictive. A lot of funding programs weren't being offered at that time. Um, and part of that was it, what I seemed like that um, we weren't one of the, or Saskatchewan Polytechnic at that time hadn't really been successful right off the bat. So it seemed like those institutions that were successful, that got that funding, were so much further ahead. And then to try to catch up or get into that game, there wasn't that those resources, same resources that were available. So again, looking at other revenue, mainly from industry, would would make that happen. So that was one one big one big difference. And and part of that too was just learning this whole sector, which is completely different. Uh, everybody was very um, collaborative and generous with their information and knowledge. So I uh, hopped on the plane and traveled across the country and visited a number of institutions and everybody was very kind and willing to share on what how it was successful for them, what didn't work. So a really good learning opportunity to how to move things forward then for Saskatchewan Polytechnic. And I try to do the same for any others at this point um, that contact us that want to talk or share information and then I do the same sort of to give back the same what was given to me when I came into this role. Part of the other the other piece too is that um, uh, sorry my notes just or my uh, just went away but that's okay the other the other piece was um, the um, moving into uh, having to get things started so at first when I was moving I thought oh my tax this is great because this is a really good fit we were having problems oh thank you <laughs> we were having problems within the university sector to get enough students eligible for li my tax because it wasn't the right fit uh, but then I learned that oh no the sector's not eligible for my tax so then that's when the advocacy started to uh, get my tax in place the other piece was the IP was another big, really big delineator uh, and also a huge success. So going to talk to industry partners, they were excited to talk to you, they wanted to talk to you and wanted to work with you. So that was very exciting to uh, move things move things forward. So those were some of the, um, and the other big difference was that it was very student, um, student focused and industry focused and community focused because uh, everything that we do in the sector is based on that and that's a, another big differentiator from the university sector awesome thanks susan and certainly and and as folks know i i have have come to this new role having spent a lot of time in the university space well and that's something that has even early days of my time on campuses has been the front and center role of our students in the research endeavor uh, uh, on colleges and the and and the real uh, what when I had a chance to be taken through the Barrett Center for Technology Innovation at Humber the entire tour was in one uh, one hub around advanced manufacturing but everybody who was talking to me your students or former students and it was it was something that I had not experienced in the same way before so that was really really something that I think we have to celebrate and lift up as as really uh, a strength um, and, a, and an important value add into into the system.
So I'm going to pivot a little bit to um, uh, the, you know, you've all sort of mentioned the some of the, the challenges as college uh, research leaders that you faced from a funding perspective. Um, and, you know, they're, they're, we're seeing more and more investments uh, from the provincial level as well. And I was wondering if you could, you could spell out a little bit, um, and maybe Susan, we'll start with you and move move back to Natalie and then Nancy, is is what is what is in the Saskatchewan context, what have you seen in terms of um, uh, more investment in the applied research space. And again, we were just chatting during the break about some things the Saskatchewan government's investing in. And then uh, Nathalie and Na Nancy, uh, uh, j'aimerais aussi que vous parlez. Nathalie and Nancy, I would like to hear you about uh, provincial support and the role it played in growth, in terms of growth. Um, funding is, is quite limited overall so but they have been very supportive of our sector for supporting our cfi grants so all of our cfi grants so they've also supported our tac application also um, they were actually excited to support uh, something that wasn't the universities because all the funding primarily went to the university sector, especially the University of Saskatchewan. So it really fit well with what how they wanted to move forward on the economic drivers for the province. Uh, we don't have any student funding, so that's why my tax um, is very important to us in the province because uh, there's no student support funding. But the other piece is we are eligible with the Health Research Foundation and there's lots of money in the Agricultural Development Fund. Uh, so we are eligible and have been successful. Um, the Health Research Foundation too, we were able to change some of that language uh, that was a little bit more restrictive that, um, again, catering to the university sector. So they were willing to change that language to increase our eligibility. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Nathalie. In Ontario, the situation is similar to the one in Saskatchewan. We have an infrastructure fund that comes with the CFI funding, but we have to apply at the province level. And then there's the support from MITAX through a federal program. The Funding for research is quite limited. And a few years ago, there was a good program. My colleagues will probably remember it. It was a program that helped us support research capacity, but that has disappeared. In Ontario, the focus is on marketing and intellectual property. So the province is really supporting colleges and universities to get them <coughs> to do some marketing and IP work. Thank you very much. And what about Quebec, Nancy? Well, I believe that Quebec was a, 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 a good player in uh, creating the CCTTs a while ago. The Senep My Center was the 17th center named in 1993 or recognized. There are now 59 CCTTs, 49 in technology, and about 10 in social innovative social practices. Those two fields go hand in hand very well, and they respond to our community's needs in our province. One determining factor was that the government supports our association, the TransTech network. Our name has changed now because we do no longer only do uh, technology. And the economy department also supported networking. And this helped us upgrade our practices, learn to work together, and improve quality, create policies, and see each other as part of a system. The government also supported CSRIs in industrial research, and this allowed us to structure some industrial sector sectors where Quebec is a big player. So the province did play a major role. It still does. There are still challenges. Maybe we'll address them at the next question. But we were really pleased to have the support of graduate studies and to have support from the uh, Ministry of the Economy. Thank you very much, Nancy. It's good to see 
at a different perspective, we see that Quebec is ahead in terms of research. I saw that at Genome Canada funding, we, we saw the province invest in genomics, so we have a lot to learn. One last question. I'll ask the question for the three panelists. I would like you to reflect on the main challenges to come in our sector. And also, I would like to know what we need to do to have a bigger impact. So looking at the future, what are the challenges and opportunities? On the floor, I'm just wanting our panelists to reflect on, you know, what what are some of the big challenges we're looking at as we come into the next number of years, but also where do we see real opportunities for impact and focus uh, for for the sector? What what would you, as you look into the crystal ball, what would you say? So per perhaps Natalie, je peux commencer avec toi, et puis Nancy, et puis Susan. Oui, absolument. Yes. Yeah, so the first challenge and the most important one is uh, sustainability and growth of research centers, uh, and not only infrastructure. At the time being, we have numerous centers, but funding is limited, so there is no growth opportunity. And this is a problem because some centers are well known, but there are others who do excellent work but do not have access to funding, so they cannot grow. I know that we always repeat over and over again that we need money, but I think the idea is also to do more with the money we have. And also, I think we need to build partnerships amongst ourselves. Applied research is not uh, quite um, an obvious thing, an obvious solution to the problems that we face. So people still don't know a lot about applied research. We have to really talk about the work that we do, make our work known. It's really hard to demonstrate the impact that we have because we do not have numbers. We are convinced that we have a big impact, but we have to find a way to talk about our successes. And then we need to um, better look at how research is managed. We have to look at uh, IP management. These are very complex topics, and our teams are not necessarily well equipped to deal with those and to invest the time that they need. Often, we are just fighting for survival. We create projects. We choose partnership initiatives to ensure our survival and growth. So these other topics are very important. They're crucial, but we are at a loss to find answers. And Natalie. Are there things that we should do? You talked about the impact, but I would like to ask the three of you, what are the challenges, but also what are the opportunities? Do you have anything to say on that? Yes. One of the things is that we have to choose the projects that we get involved in. When we develop our capacity, We do not always ask ourselves, do I need this project? Sometimes there can be five solutions, but five patents already. So you have to choose the right projects and work uh, with partners. Let's see, what are the challenges and opportunities? Well, challenges for centers such as ours, we have $13 million worth of infrastructure, and we get the same basic funding as any other center. Some other centers are very small, so it is quite difficult to continue maintaining this infrastructure. Basic funding or basic expenses for us are, are uh, $1.2 million. We receive 15 percent of funding in other centers, they receive 40 percent. We are, why is there a difference? Why are we still getting so little money compared to universities? I have a, I received a f provincial funding recently and it was 7 percent for indirect expenses. So 
This is a big challenge. It has to do with how sustainable my center is. And my sister Ella helps different, uh, several businesses every year. So now, with regard to opportunities, well, we have to work together in uh, laboratories without any silo to respond to community needs, to industrial needs. In Quebec, we have started to work. We have a team in the, en in the energy sector and the food sector. We are trying to uh, create a team in the uh, drug sector. And we are looking at international intellig um, artificial intelligence as well. And we have to really work together along with universities. We have to be part of those projects at the very beginning. We have to be productive and to really um, have a smoother involvement. Thank you very much, Nancy and Natalie. Aiming our work in a challenge-based approach uh, that really brings in uh, the ecosystem of players around big challenges. We're going to get a lot further uh, in terms of our call for investments as well. Donc je suis absolument d'accord. So I totally agree. Susan. Uh, yeah, that's great. There, um, I guess one of the biggest challenges uh, for us that we're seeing is just the demand from industry and the community and not able to meet that demand. And what goes along with that is just that availability of funding to support that demand uh, from both of those communities. Um, you know, not, a, not enough funding or even having the funding on that type of uh, review times or catering to actually the speed of industry or the processes that might be quite burdensome for you know the limited amount of funding that you may be getting. Um, but I see in the futures of the opportunities just along that is collaboration, collaboration, and collaboration. And that's one thing what, when we I did move to this sector, I thought there's so much opportunity for us to work together to deliver solutions to industry and community sectors, but there's no funding regimen or process in place that would allow this sector to do that. So that's why I definitely agree that working with ministries or uh, those challenges of getting funding sources um, available so that our sector can work together to deliver the, those solutions either to the communities or industry sectors uh, for the good of Canada, across Canada. Um, so yeah, advocating for those other funding mechanisms so that we can do this. And I, I know there's a number of us that are involved in other networks or to, you know collaborations that we're setting up. So, you know, we want to work together, but it's also with um, university sectors, research institutes, hospitals, and so forth that we can add a lot of value to. Um, you know, good example, what we're doing in Saskatchewan, we're creating the Global Institute of Energy, Minerals, and Society collaboration between both universities and Saskatchewan Polytechnic, looking at re applied research, research, and training that's required to meet those industry man demands of the province. Uh, again, very well, it's going to be supported by the province um, as a, you know, priority to, to move forward with. Uh, Another piece that I even internally that I see could help, and, and I know a lot of our programs incorporate applied research into the programming um, at our institutions. It's not every program, but again, just having that mindset of our students as they move into their in their world of employment um, would help benefit moving forward innovation to wherever wherever they're placed, whether it's industry, um, community, organizations, but just having that that thinking of how to move things forward would be another asset. Thank you so much. So this has been a terrific armchair discussion, but I'm going to open up the living room uh, to everybody. Uh, for We've got about 10 minutes for questions. On a, uh, on veut avoir une conversation. We'd like to have a chat with you. We have around 10 minutes. And so I'd like to invite you to come ask your questions. We have uh, roving mics. With, we have one with Catherine here. For our panelists or comments or observations, uh, now's, now's an opportunity. And then we can continue more informally over lunch. OK, Mark. <laughs> Thank you. I always give three seconds before I, I ask. So <laughs> you have to jump in. <clears throat> um, I, I, was, um, I came up as a scientist. And you know, when you're a scientist, you try not to think about politics and government relations. But now it's part of my portfolio. I have no choice. And so what I want to ask the panel and Parry, 
say, of course, we want continuous funding and all that, but politicians like to, to announce new things. They don't want to announce continuing things. And uh, we know that in Ontario, we have Colleges Ontario, and other provinces have their own uh, associations. And of course, we have CICAN doing advocacy for the system at the highest level. Do you find that doing advocacy, government relations, essentially, with local politicians is making a difference for you? Because when I was uh, fortunate enough to talk to uh, the SRSR committee uh, that was doing a, a project uh, that's at the, the parliamentary committee, <laughs> there were two university people and one college person. We all got our five minutes, but I got 12 questions while the other two university types got five combined because a lot of colleges are in writings all across the nation. There are more colleges. <clears throat> so do you find that in interacting with local politicians is helpful? Would you allow me to answer in French? Yes, of course. Representation is very important in order to bring to our politicians' attention what's going on. Often they don't know me or know us or don't know us well, so we evolve quickly as a center. We have to keep them praised. I think that a center could have major impacts for their community and it could influence what we become. My, my city, things were closing down, plants were closing down, and it's a city, it's a place where I raised my hand and I said that my, my city is needs to be rebuilt, re, reborn, and I really believe that we have to influence, we have to have results, and people have to realize just how important we are. And when we were, when they are asked if refinancing is important, they'll say, of course, because the impacts are important. Politicians always change, politics move quickly, so we have to be aware of politicians' challenges as well. So it takes a lot of energy, but I think it's an important component. I would say that it's the strength of networks when CI can or other groups organize uh, letter campaigns or awareness campaigns. It's important to work together because I don't think our college is going to do that, make that much noise to make things move forward. So I encourage you to continue those those things that we've already done. Saskatchewan is a, a small number of people provinces, so everybody, there's really good connection um, to the province and to the local local cities in that. So yeah, we work really close together and everybody sort of knows knows each other on that side. But there is advocacy at the, the federal level, but that's sort of, that's led out of the uh, president's office. Uh, for that, um, but um, uh, yeah, locally we work closely with our province, yeah. Maybe I'll just add one point and then we'll see if there's other questions. I think it's a really good question and we, um, we've been talking about it um, a lot um, as I've joined CICAN, but certainly my experience has always been that it starts with relationship building. At the end of the day, good government relations is good relations. And that means that you, um, pardon? Oh, okay. Uh, that that you you need to understand uh, what is, and this is exactly what Nancy said. You need to understand what is motivating those politicians. What is it that they care about in terms of their ridings, and how do you translate what it is that you're doing to show that you're bringing a solution? I and I talked about this a lot with with my university colleagues a lot, who often did science communications as if if I just tell them enough information about why it's important, they'll get it. It's more, much more about if I, it, how am I listening to what they are saying are their challenges and then what am I bringing to the table? And, and that is also about making sure that we have built relations with our community leaders, our mayors, our First Nations and Inuit and Métis leaders, our social and not-for-profit communities. And are they telling our story to decision makers and par parliamentarians and, and local MPs as well? So, yeah. Oui. Question. Bonjour, David Bertium, uh, de... Hi everyone, David Bertium from Chemitech in Thetford. You talk a lot about impacts. I've been involved in the college, ne college network for 20 years and I think it's hard to show the value of what we're already doing. We do a lot of things that have major impacts. Unfortunately, 
we don't have enough time or resources to speak about it properly. Of course, we do it when we can, as much as we can. We attend conferences, but today we're speaking between us. There aren't that many people from elsewhere. There are no politicians. Yes, we we have funding agencies that are already in a partnership with us, but other than that, there are few people and few opportunities. We have to find those people and find those opportunities. I think that if we just spoke to what we've already accomplished in the last few years, we would have a lot of things to say and a lot of things to rediscover. I, So we really have to look at what we've done and I think we would have things to say. Just to comment on talking about what we've already accomplished, I'm sure that some people would be very surprised to and would say, wow, you've really done that? We really have things we can talk about. I absolutely agree. I'd like to know how often you've invited your MPs to come to the campus, to come to the labs, and we have to open our doors. Absolutely. I completely agree. Any comments? We have another question. So strongly feel that the college sector would benefit from uh, Taylor Swift's PR team to help <laughs> us drive that excitement. Um, we talk a lot. Obviously, the need for money is huge. Um, what is the sense in terms of what can we ask private sector to invest in? Is it through more work with our foundations? Is it through perhaps more tax breaks through the SHRED program? I know that our familiarity with some of our amazing granting agencies, Ed's right next to me in case you didn't know this, often makes us really comfortable with going back to them. But should we as a sector, with the idea that a rising tide lifts all ships, should we be looking to our industry partners with a more consistent ask, with a more consistent value proposition, knowing that there's so many priorities always going already to our federal and provincial funding agencies? Bonne question. That's a good question. Does anyone want to answer? C'est une bonne remarque. Je me demandais au sujet des différences entre les différentes provinces. Je me demande s'il y a une uniformité. En Saskatchewan, nous n'avons pas de grands secteurs comme en Ontario ou au Québec. Donc, on n'a pas de grandes compagnies. Il y en a quelques-unes, mais plus de 90 sont des PME. On travaille avec les multinationales également. Par contre, bon, et c'est difficile pour les PME d'avoir les fonds qui permettent de faire cette recherche et développement. On a certainement d'excellents contrats avec les grandes entreprises qui veulent euh, des projets, faire faire des projets, et ça, ça fonctionne bien. Donc, je n'ai pas vraiment une réponse pour vous. Donc, ce serait bien, mais je ne sais pas si ce serait une bonne solution dans l'ensemble du pays selon le secteur. Nathalie? Je pense qu'on devrait en demander davantage, même si c'est difficile pour certains d'entre eux. Si vous voulez faire une mise en marché d'un produit, il faut investir l'énergie et les ressources nécessaires. Et au départ, les entreprises pensaient que euh, la recherche appliquée dans les collèges était gratuite et qu'ils n'avaient rien à investir, mais ce n'est pas vrai. Donc, c'est quelque chose qu'on essaie de faire à la Cité, de faire en sorte que les compagnies contribuent davantage si elles le peuvent. C'est très important pour nous, pour notre croissance. Et, et ça, c'est un indicateur du niveau d'engagement dans cette collaboration. On veut un partenaire qui s'engage. Et s'ils ne le prennent pas au sérieux, ça ne vaut pas la peine de collaborer. Nancy? Euh, que, um, avec I'd like to add that I agree with my colleagues. It's important that we ask for contributions according to how much a company can pay. In my center, 65% of my clients are SMEs. Currently, it's really difficult with the economy. We've seen a big slowdown since August. It's been very difficult for us. So the funding capacity has reduced. People have ideas. People come to see us, but people aren't moving forward. Currently, we are not booking any projects. 
So I'm telling you, there's a big slowdown that's coming up. We often feel it six months in advance. I noticed it in 2010. So we have to look about the funding capacity. If we're working with Dumta, we can ask for more money. If we're working with an SME, asking there, them for 35% is enough. And finally, to get more contributions from companies, we need to offer more technical assistance services. We can't compete with the private industry. So it's a challenge. Yes, often partners will ask us, uh, funding partners will ask us to ask more money from companies, but it, it is complex. Or question. I just want, I want to say one thing about your question because I love it. And one of the things that we've been talking about and I've been thinking about for a while, particularly with the, the government's focus on foreign direct investment, they are trying to attract major multinationals to come to this country to invest. I think we should be adding clauses that makes it mandatory to partner with our colleges and universities on applied research and student training as part of those agreements. If we're going to be investing a lot of money for those kind of jobs, we should also be building our own capacity. And, and these are the kind of conversations that I think we be need, need to be having with Minister Champagne and his team because they're touting the FDI side, but the building our own capacity to do that has to be part of those agreements, in my view. We have one final question over here, and then we're going to wrap up because I'm getting the signal from my team that we need to move to lunch. It, it's a quick one that builds on what we were just talking about. Um, with the opportunity for consultation from the government on the SHRED program, um, is there any sort of coordination among college? I'm an industry partner, by the way, so I have no no clue. But is there a coordination among the poly colleges to look at kind of what the asks should be from colleges as far as how those the the funding could be, you know, kind of conjoined with collaboration with colleges to further incentivize industry to partner. Great point. I'm really glad you raised that. I think this is something we could look at um, at, at CICAN with our partners and also through our National Research Advisory Committee. I think it, it's a very important consultation right now. Um, and and certainly if there's, a, there's an interest uh, in us uh, looking at that and seeing it as an opportunity to make some of those points, I think it's a great suggestion. Okay, but join you. I'd like you to join me to thank Nancy, Nathalie, and Susan for their comments and their lovely panel. Such amazing leaders uh, driving our, our uh, efforts across the country. So I'm going to leave it to Anna to talk a little bit about um, what's coming up uh, next.